Welcome to the Daily Brief, where we'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, December 8th, and then we'll see how things look for Friday, December 9th. We had an up day after having a string of down days recently. It really hasn't changed the picture other than it's worked off a little bit of the short-term overbought condition that we're looking at. Our ADX and a couple of our other indicators that I'll show you they're, they're kind of mixed up because they were just crossing as we were going down. And then to have an up day, they're kind of crossing back over positive. But at this point, it's not really enough to say that things are shifting. We still have everything pretty much pointing down. So what happened in the session on Thursday? Right at the open, we did have a higher open. We were able to get above the daily pivot at 39.38. Prices went above R1, so we just blew through that at 39.53. And then we finally hit resistance at R2, 39.73. As the day went on, we bounced between R1 and R2. We, it was kind of like a ping pong match for the rest of the session. We were up 0.75% on below average volume. The technicals, as I stated, were still negative overall. It's going to take a lot more than the bounce that we saw on Thursday to really shift things around. There wasn't really any significant economic reports in Thursday's session. The jobless claims, and I'll go through that, that was it. And we do have some reports coming out on Friday, and then next week will be some things as well. So here is the intraday chart where we opened above the pivot, went through R1 and then stopped right at R2 two times. We came back down to R1, went back up to R2, came back down. So we just bumped around in these levels for pretty much the whole day. So what are some comments that we can make? The PPI will come out on Friday. Also consumer sentiment is coming out. And then next week we're gonna get CPI and then there's the big Fed meeting that will be happening. We have yet another spike with the equity put call ratio. And this is strange because usually we see this kind of a spike at a capitulation when the market's washing out and people are finally throwing in the towel and just saying, ah, just sell at any price. I don't care. Just, you know, do whatever you need to do to get me out. It's, but that's not really what's happening here. This is more, at least it appears to be more of a hedging type of scenario where you have a position and then you buy options. Typically, that's what's used to protect that position. And it's very common. I do that all the time. And I teach about it in my classes. And But that can bite into your returns. And so if you don't have to buy the insurance, so, so to speak, then you don't because that gives you a greater return. Well, we're seeing people really loading up on especially puts because most people are long in their positions. They're hoping to buy low and sell high. And it seems to be happening. We saw that happen right before Thanksgiving. We've seen that happen recently. We're seeing it ahead of some big economic reports and the Fed meeting. And it's almost like people are gearing up just in case things continue to go down. There's some protection there for them. We did see a slight rebound after five straight losses. The U.S. dollar was down, which gave some support to stocks, but interest rates were up. But the market really hasn't been working like that the last few sessions, where if we see the dollar down, stocks go up and interest rates go down, eh, they're kind of not really, that, that dynamic isn't really big currently. Now, it'll probably shift, but right now it's not very big. Most charts continue to be negative. We still have the Stoke RSI as extreme negative, but we had the Williams percent R, that's no longer extreme negative. And really, the Stoke RSI, it's just barely extreme negative. You could almost say that it's worked off that oversold condition. We still have all of our yield curves that are inverted. Sentiment is still positive. Even it's dropping a little bit, but we're still in the green area. We haven't shifted back to neutral, at least yet. We had the weekly jobless claims. They actually were greater than expected at 230,000. They thought they were going to come out at 220,000. And our trend, because of the update, the ADX, the green and the red, and I'll show you the chart, has crossed back over positive, but it's still below 20 and declining. Our bias, I switched it over to mixed because we've had some pretty significant down days and one little bump up day. And I don't know if that's really enough to change the bias overall. 
but I'm keeping our momentum at negative currently. All right, here is the chart that we're potentially mirroring. And for a lot of the recent past, which is the white line here, that has been pretty close to what was happening back from 2006 through 2008. And right about now is about the time when we saw a little bit of a spike up with this yellow chart and then a real significant decline. Well, we're starting to come back down, even though it's not updated on this chart. We're coming down. We're back below 4,000. We're into the 39s, and you have the scale over here on the left. Are we going to match what was already happening? And right now, it looks like that could be a possibility. We also have the VIX, and this hasn't been updated in a while now, but if stocks can continue to go down, we're going to see an increase in the VIX or volatility but we're still at a pretty low reading overall, and our VIX actually fell a little bit in Thursday's session. Here's the ADX, where we had, were starting to see the red line go above the green line. Well, with the up day, now the green line's going back slightly above the red line. We're below 20 and declining, so it's a weakening trend. The BPI didn't it's not extreme positive, but I've been doing a lot of focusing on this lately, so I just want to keep this chart in the mix. Nothing really changed here all that much. It didn't go up with the update, but it didn't decline either. And it's coming off of an extreme positive reading. And when that happens, sometimes this marks a top in the S&P. And we're just wondering, is that going to happen this time? Here's our different kind of moving average study. We're looking at a double exponential moving average and a triple. That's DEMA and TEMA, where the blue line, the 50 period, double exponential moving average has been providing support up to this point. The red line is still on top, even though it's rolling over, but this is still, it, it's holding up for right now. So we want to see, can that continue or are we going to fall below this and see continu continued weakness? Here's the equity put call ratio where we're just spiking up again, where we're seeing a lot of recent spikes here. We're usually down here in the lower areas. But as you have a lot of uncertainty in the market and a lot of concern, and we're kind of coming into the end of the year where now everybody's going to be comparing what did they get on an annual basis for 2022, and they may want to lessen the losses as much as possible. So we might be seeing some of the equity put call ratio action because of that. And then with our five day, it's starting to turn back up. We're still working off of the spike here, but if we were, if, if this was more legitimate and we were going to start going up with the S&P, we would see this five period continue to decline. And we're not, we're seeing it turning around and actually going back up. Here's the daily chart. We're right just a teeny bit above the pivot. So above the pivot is considered positive for the month and below it would be negative. And we're just kind of really indecisive currently. And then at the bottom, you see where volume did drop off. We had an update on a decrease in volume. That's typically a warning sign. Here's our moving average tree where the 100 period moving average has been providing support. We came back up to one of the 20 moving averages and that's acting as overhead resistance. But we're, we're just seeing a consolidation kind of sideways right now. And with some of the reports coming out and getting closer to the end of the year, We'll have to see, are, are things going to break back to the upside? Are we going to recapture some of these moving averages or are we going to break to the downside? Our charts right now are suggesting we probably will break down, but that can always change. We get a couple of good solid days that could shift our technical picture. So we're, we're kind of undecided right now. And that's probably good for being in a sideways trendless scenario currently. Here's the new highs, new lows. Saw a little bit of a breakout with the new highs and a, kind of a contraction with the new lows, but we're still headed down with the five period moving average and declining with the 10 period as well. This is another chart that it was getting really close to crossing and it crossed over negative only to have the up day on Thursday and now it's crossing back over positive. So it's not really decisive. And here's our FIB level. Nothing really new to show here. We're kind of in between some current FIB levels that may act as support or resistance. Longer term, kind of the same thing. We're below support, or excuse me, we're below resistance, but we're still above support. 
Oil continues to fall, getting down to about 71. And this is helping gas to decline, which is kind of nice if you're having to put gas in your car and you're seeing prices come down slightly. So what's our outlook for Friday? The technicals are still negative. Even with the update, we have the PPI, the producer price index coming out, consumer sentiment, and then wholesale inventories. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then as far as the geopolitical events, we're still fixated, at least the stock market is, on the inflation and interest rates. Oil has just really been declining ever since the EU said they're going to make a target price of $60 a barrel when they sell this to Russia. We're not really getting any Fed speak now because they're probably on lockdown. But that's there's a lot of speculation about what will happen next week at the FOMC meeting. So our scenarios, not going with the down scenario, because our even though our technicals are still negative, our ADX is declining. So it's showing that we're chopping sideways. Definitely not going with the positive scenario. We need to see a lot more follow through buying than just what we saw on Thursday. And then we are going with the sideways because the ADX is below 20 and it's switched back over slightly positive. It's, if we have an up day, it's positive. If we have a down day on Friday, it'll probably switch back negative. So our conclusion, the S&P continues to be negative overall. Short term, we're negative, but there was a slight improvement because we worked off some of those short term indicators. Intermediate term, we're still negative. Long term, we continue to be negative and we're consistently below the 200 day simple moving average. So have a great Friday. I'll prepare a video over the weekend, at least the daily brief. I'm unsure about the weekly and the intermarket analysis video. Nothing's really changed. I still look at those charts. We're still pretty negative overall with both of those additional videos that I do. So have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.